key. With a powerful name, a glorious name. Demons tremble at the name of Jesus. Strongholds are broken at the name of Jesus. So we declare the name of Jesus. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Every heart and every mind Cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus Till every dark addiction starts to break Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus. Your name is power. Your name is healing. Your name is life. Break every stronghold. Shine through the shadow.
is your moment. Let's lift up the name of Jesus. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. Miracle signs and wonders happen at that very mention of God's name. Demons begin to tremble at the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's raise them up. talks about is holy is the Lord and so just like we just sang holy is the Lord isn't just lyrics that's right popular belief it's actually saying holy which means to not only be set apart but to be set above the, the Word of God says that he is set above every angel every spiritual being every being here maybe some giant that you're facing this morning he's above that so we declare holy is the Lord and that's what then brings us to say, his presence fills the temple when we worship him. And before Jesus came and defeated death and defeated the grave, the Bible says that the temple was more of a building that had a very intentional design, it, almost like a blueprint that was super articulate for, a place, for a, people, a place for people to come to experience the presence of God. But because of Jesus' death, and resurrection that place is now god's most articulate and intentional design which is you and which is me and so when we sing his presence fills the temple when we worship him he's talking about us and it's only then that our response can be hallelujah to the one who came and made a way so that i could experience the presence of god and hallelujah meaning praise to god not because he I can see it in my circumstance or not because things are going really well right now, but it's in our suffering that we see how good God can be. And we say, Lord, I've seen you do it and I know you'll do it again, but the ultimate way you can make for me is bringing Jesus to come so that I can experience your presence in my life. And so whether you're singing this for the first time or the 10,000th time, either way, the song will sound amazing because its purpose is to bring glory to God. And so whether you're in the room or you're watching us online or if we have friends in the lobby, I want to invite you this morning to sing hallelujah to the one who came and made a way. So come on, let's sing together. Hallelujah to the one who came and made a way. Hallelujah to the one who died and rose again. Across this place, if you're comfortable, let's just raise our hands and sing. Hallelujah to the one who came.
this morning at Transformation Church. If you guys can, just take a quick seat real quick. Again, welcome today to Easter service right here at Transformation Church. If I haven't had the chance to meet you just yet, my name is Rick Rodriguez, and I'm on staff as one of the pastors here at TC. And my name's Nate, and I get the honor to serve as the student instructor here at Transformation Church. Can we give it up for everybody that's new with here this mo- with us here this morning? We're so grateful you're joining us. Thank you so much. And if you're new with us, on the seat back in front of you, there's a disc, and you can unlock your phone and you can put it up to the disc, and that'll take you to our central hub where you can fill out a connect card. And if you just let the people out at the big orange tent outside that you filled one out, we have a free gift that we would love to give you just to say thank you for joining us today here on Easter Sunday. But, or you can also go to mytc.life on your smartphone, and that'll also take you to our central hub where you can find out anything that you need to know about anything that's happening here at Transformation Church. That's also where you can go and get signed up for water baptisms, which next week is water baptism Sunday. We're so excited for that. It's always a powerful Sunday, but that's also where we give. Absolutely. Now here at TC, we are radical about generosity. And if you would love to continue to worship with us today through giving, you can do that in a couple of ways. Number one, in the seat back in front of you, there is some offering envelopes. So you can give by cash or check. And you can drop those off in our offering boxes located throughout our auditorium, even on our campus. Or you can visit our central hub or go to mytc.life. You can give there as well. Hey, guys, one more time. Can we just give it up for Jesus and what God's doing all over this place? Come on. Again, guys, we just want to say this. Welcome today again to TC for Easter. Darkness fell upon Golgotha, tortured body wrapped in shroud. Our Messiah lay beneath the ground. Every curse upon his shoulders, with our sin he was adorned. Perfect lamb led to the slaughter as a ransom for our souls. One last act and it was finished Power of sin and hell were torn On this cross was our victory won By his love he would overcome Long live the King The wrath of God is Long live the King Once and once for all He paid the price And death has died Now every sin and sickness Bows its knee And I can't help but Itself could not enslave the exodus of ancient sinners, marched in triumph of parade. By me, hell had been overcome by Jesus Christ, the anointed one. Lord. Long live the King 
outside Jerusalem time still signal drop earth dark heart stop but what is time to one who has no beginning or end it was his decision to step out of this world and his glory to step back in. We stripped divinity from a cross, placed his body in a cave to let the world mourn the rabbi who claimed he could save. We prepared a borrowed grave for this Jesus, Prince of Peace, unaware he had only signed for a three-day lease. Now this is where the stone trembles, when the lion's been sided long enough. This is the resurrection on record. This is definitive proof of love. This is the beginning after every ending. This is mercy. This is grace. This is Jesus has defeated death. This is why we have church on Sundays. This is forgiveness. This is select all, delete all of our guilt. This is are you hungry for new life? Then come and have your fill. This is a God who is faithful every minute, every hour. This is victory and triumph. This is Holy Spirit power. This is the devil's worst nightmare. The lion of the tribe of Judah. This is heaven meets earth in harmony, singing glory, hallelujah. This is for every country, every city, every culture, every tribe. This is why do you look for the living among the dead? He is risen. He's alive. There is a lion roaring. Jesus, the King of Glory.
Good morning, TC. Let's give it for Jesus one more time. Man, we are so glad you guys are here. Welcome to Easter 2024. We've had people all over the campus today in the lobbies. It's just been amazing. And uh, man, we want to let you know that we are so excited about what God is doing in people's lives. And we're excited he wants to do it in your life. All right. And so uh, super, super pumped about what's happening. How many guys have ever struggled to belong before? Anybody ever just, if you're like me, you guys trying to struggle. So I grew up very in a very multicultural environment. Uh, my dad planted churches. I'm not going to lie to you. He planted churches smack in the middle of the hood when I was growing up. Uh, and so I've always been in very diverse environments. Matter of fact, when we moved to the South, that was when I got a culture shock because I was, I've never been around that many white people in my life. Uh, and so, um, but luckily I ended up at Brentwood Middle School where I was definitely the salt and mix the pepper. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and so it was, it was amazing. Uh, and then I get to Woodham High School kind of the same way, uh, playing basketball. Just, you know, it was like, I, I, I was always kind of the, uh, the, the only white dude in my friend circles a lot of times. So uh, my man D-Mark's on the front row. He, he knows exactly what I'm talking about. Like I've always been very, uh, I would say, cultured. I've always been invited to the cookout. I'll put it that way. Uh, grew up wearing FUBU and Jordan like that. All right. So anyway, so all that to say um, that uh, it, just last Saturday, I got to preach at Friendship Missionary Baptist Church uh, on Palm Sunday. And uh, it took me back in time because uh, out of seven preachers, I was the only white dude on the platform. And, uh, and so it was so cool because I was like, oh, man, this is my spot right here. Like if I was like, this is, I feel like I'm growing up all over again. It was dope. Anyway, but I say that to say is how many of you have ever gone through seasons of your life where you felt like you struggled to fit in wherever you were at? Like maybe you felt like you fit in, but you didn't. And then there are times that you did fit in, but then you, then you at the same time, you felt like you didn't. So you kind of struggled in this tension. And how many of you acknowledge with me, as you get older, it doesn't get easier. Matter of fact, it doesn't get easier. You just get busier. But the reality is oftentimes we struggle to fit in and, and we want to take just a moment to communicate to you that we as a church, we want to embrace every person. But more importantly, we want to show you how God has a way that he wants you to live your life. And he wants four things he wants for your life. Uh, and doing so helps you fit into the kingdom of God more than just the church. And, and so he wants you to experience four things. And as a church, we're here to help you. The first one is he wants you to know God. To know God, not just know about God. Listen to me, to truly know him. There's a big difference between knowing about someone and knowing someone. So he wants you to know him. The second thing he wants for you is that you would find freedom. Because how many guys know it's hard to see tomorrow clearly when you're still hanging on to yesterday? And God wants you to find freedom from your yesterday so you can pursue your purpose and the, the, the thing that God has for you tomorrow. And so that you can clear the lens and actually see this light that God has for you, which then he wants you to take the next step and discover your purpose. God built you with a purpose. So listen, I don't know what your parents' situation was. I don't know where you came from, but I do know this. You are not an accident. That when you were born, God birthed you with a purpose. He put something in you. He knew you before he formed you in the womb of your mother. And I'm here to tell you today that there's a purpose in you. And listen, and we say there's two great days in your life. The, the day you were born and the day you discover why. And we want to help you discover what that purpose is. And then the fourth thing is that you would make a difference. Uh, and so we want to show you how your life can count so that you're not just moving through life, you're living a thriving, purposeful life. And at Transformation Church, we can help you with that if you'll let us. And so I'm inviting you because here's the deal. We, the, we, we want you to understand this. You ready? You belong here. Look at your neighbor and say, you belong here. All right. Now, some of you are like, I don't know if you belong here. So I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. Like, you belong here. All right. So wherever you're coming from, whatever your background is, listen to me, listen to me. Whatever you struggle with, you still belong here. All right, we want you to know that, you know. And so here's what I want you to do. We want every person here today to make sure you fill out a connect card for us. The reason why is there's some important questions on there. So you can take your phone out. You can tap that disc on the seat back in front of you. If you're watching online or you're in the lobby with us today, just go to mytc.life on your smartphone. But you'll, it'll take you to the central hub. You can click connect card. And we want every person in the building watching online to fill it out. The reason why is there's some important questions that some data we want to get from everybody at Transformation Church. And since you're all here on the same day, praise God, right? Since we're all here together, we want to take advantage of this time. But I just want to highlight those three questions to make sure you answer. Number one, uh, we're getting ready to add another service. So we're getting ready to go to four services permanently here at TC. And so... 
And the, the first question is, I'd be willing to attend these service times. We've given you some options because we want to make sure we fulfill the need, not just add service time. So what is the need of the church? The second thing, I'd like to hear messages on what the Bible says about blank. And so we, we, later in the year, we're going to do a series, and the series is going to be catered towards your answers on this question. So I'd like to hear what the Bible says about anxiety, depression, finances, raising children, right? Like we've been duct taped on the chairs, but surely there's got to be a better way, right? So, so whatever it is, like we want to help you uh, with that. So you, and then there's even another box where you can put your own answer in, and we're going to do a whole series answering those questions. And so uh, sometimes I think churches are really good at answering the questions that no one's asking. So we want to answer some of the questions you are asking, all right? Uh, and then last but not least, we're getting ready to open up some new campuses. We're looking at that and entertaining those possibilities. And so uh, if you'd be willing or interested in going to and or joining the launch team, for the next campus, we want you to click that box as well. Some of you have an entrepreneur spirit. You're always ready to start something new, be a part of the startup. If that's you, let us know because we want to help uh, get you connected to the launch team. But if you'll do that, please. But we want every, even if you're a Transformation Church member, listen, even if you were like the fifth member of the church ever to exist, feel the connect card out. All right, do us a huge favor and do that at some point throughout the service. But today I want to show you the idea that Jesus being king in our life changes everything. Matter of fact, if you notice, there's a thread, even throughout all of our worship today, that Jesus is king. I want to take you to Matthew 27 to highlight what's happening in this story. So Jesus goes before the governor, right? And that's where we pick up where he's being judged. And, and so the, the Jews are looking at Jesus and the, the religious leaders of the Jews are saying, you're not our king. But the Romans are also saying, you're not a king. And so Jesus is declaring himself as the Messiah, as the king, but no people group wants him to be the Messiah or the king. And so meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor, as you see in verse 11, and the governor asked him, are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied, which I love Jesus' answer because he's not like, yes. He's just like, yeah, you know. Like, he doesn't give him a direct answer. He's just like, you know what it is. That's the BLV, by the way, the Brad Livingston version of the Bible. But like, so you, you have said so, Jesus replied. And because of this, the governor actually turns Jesus over to the Pharisees. And he says, you can have your way with him. And so they, they literally beat him. They scourge his back wide open. They rip his flesh. And in verse 29, to mock him, it says, then they twisted together a crown of thorns and they set it on his head to mock him. And, and these long thorns dig into his skull, tear his flesh, blood running down his face. They rip the hair from his beard and from his head as they mock him, declaring him to be some sort of king. And then they hang him on a cross and he dies. And we see on verse 37, above his head, they place the written charge, right? It says this, this is Jesus, king of the Jews. Now, the thing is, they were making a declaration of sarcasm, this is the king of the Jews. But the reality is the Jews didn't want him to be king and the Romans didn't recognize him as a king. And so what they're saying is this is the king of the Jews. But can I tell you something? He is the king of the Jews. Can I tell you something else? He's not just the king of the Jews. He's the king of all of us. He came to rule and reign in our life. He, and then we know three days later, he resurrects from the dead. And that's what we're here to celebrate today, that Jesus is alive. Come on, can we give it up for Jesus this morning? He's alive this morning. He resurrected. And so... We see this one simple truth that I want you to understand today as we kick off, because I want you to know that the resurrected king can resurrect me. Listen, your life can be resurrected. Your life can be brought back. Your life can be brought to the, whatever you think is dead and gone, you think it's gone too far. Listen to me, the resurrected king can resurrect me. And I want to show you three things that Jesus does as king. The first one is as a king, Jesus rules and reigns. He rules, say rules, and he reigns, say reigns. He rules and reigns. That means he has authority and he has power over everything. In Revelation 19, 11 through 16, John sees what's coming in the future. And this is what he sees that's going to happen. As he talks about Jesus, he says, I saw heaven standing open and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and true, right? He said, so he goes on to say, with justice, he judges 
and wages war. How many guys know that doesn't sound like he's coming for peacekeeping? Right? So don't get me wrong, Jesus is one of peace, one of love, but when he comes back, he's coming back to make sure that everyone knows that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. So just as he judges and wages war, because I want to say his eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many what? Crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but himself. He has his own identity. Then he says he's dressed in a robe dipped in blood and his name is the word of God. And on his robe and on his thigh is written, he has a name, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Listen, when Jesus returns, there will be no mistaking who he is. So they might have mistaked it the first time, but they won't mistake it again. Because Jesus came to be king. And here's the idea that I want you to grab a hold of today is that God rules and reigns in my life. I think it's so interesting, I'm not gonna get into politics, but I do think it's so interesting that over the last few elections, this one phrase has popped up over and over again, no matter who won, didn't matter if it's a Democrat or Republican, and I don't care about all that stuff, but I'm saying, it's so interesting, this phrase, that's not my president. Anybody heard that before? Anybody else wanna be like, shut up, right? That's not my president. You wanna look at him and be like, but it is. Come on, anybody, anybody else? Just want to, but it is though, right? It's like, if you live in America, that's your president. I didn't vote for him. Doesn't matter. He's got the authority. He's got the office. He's got the power. That's your president, right? Now, I'm not here to talk about presidents, praise God. But what I am here to talk about is the idea, there's a big difference between a democracy and a dictatorship. In the democracy, you get a vote, you get a, you get to cast your ballot, you get to make, have a voice into what's going to happen, into society, into politics. Into the, but a dictatorship is nothing like that. One person has all power, all authority, all rulership, all everything that he needs to rule and reign. And can I tell you something? The kingdom of heaven is not a democracy. It is a dictatorship where Jesus rules and reigns. Now, the good thing, the difference between every dictatorship we've ever seen on earth and the kingdom of heaven is every dictator we've ever seen has an evil heart wicked desires and wants to rule for his own game. But the beauty of the kingdom of heaven and Jesus being king is that he rules and reigns with power, but also with righteousness at his right hand. And he's looking out for the best interests of all of us. And so we can submit to Jesus as king, knowing he's got us taken care of. And so that's the beauty behind who Jesus is as king. And so when we surrender to his rule and reign, we get to see Jesus do amazing things. But then the second thing is as a king, Jesus adopts us into his family. Jesus adopts us. Say adopts. He brings us into his family. Jesus is looking to, to adopt us. Listen, we didn't belong. We didn't have anywhere that we could plug into. We, our sin separated us from God. And that's why I love Ephesians 1, 4 through 5. It says it like this. It says, he chose us in him, meaning God. He chose us in him, meaning Jesus. So through what Jesus was going to do on the cross, he chose us. Before the foundation of the world, listen, before you ever messed up, Jesus is already looking at you. That's a good thing. Before the foundation of the world, that we would be holy and blameless before him. Listen, in love, he predestined us to adoption as sons and daughters through Jesus Christ to himself. Listen to me, you've been adopted. How many guys know that kings have princes and princesses. And how many guys know princes and princesses have different access to the throne than everyone else does, right? Uh, there was a, I don't remember who, who said it. I think it was C.S. Lewis said, uh, only the daughter of a king, a son or daughter of a king would have the audaciousness to wake him, but only the son or daughter of the king would bring love to the one who's waking his heart. In other words, when you walk into the kingdom, he's not mad at you. He's looking with anxious arrival for you to walk through the door because he loves us. And here's the reality. When we're adopted as sons and daughters, we now have access to heaven, meaning where you once did not belong because of Jesus, now you belong. That's what we see in Romans 8, 16 through 17. Now, if we are children, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ 
meaning we have access. We're, we're the children of God, right? If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory, meaning that if we have sufferings in this world, don't worry, Jesus did too, but that means the suffering or the glory that waits for us in heaven is also waiting where Christ Jesus is at. So we get the honor and privilege of being with Jesus because he's king. Now, here's the reality. Uh, I, I have an adopted brother and sister, all right? And so uh, they're Vietnamese. And so we look nothing alike. And so, uh, matter of fact, my brother, you probably saw him on the way in. Uh, he's like 110 pounds with a big smile and Vietnamese. And I am not 110 pounds. Y'all didn't have to laugh that hard at that part. So, but it's interesting. When my dad went to file the paperwork with the state, they said, uh, just so you're aware, Mr. Livingston, uh, that your blood daughter and blood son, the ones you birthed, you can remove them from your will anytime you want to. You can write them out of your will. You can make sure they get zero dollars and zero cents from your estate when you die. But your adopted son and daughter, you can never remove from your will. They're permanent because you have chosen to take authority and ownership to be the guardian of their lives. Therefore, they will always have access to your estate. Can I tell you something? You may not have been born into it, but you were adopted into it. And there is a kingdom of heaven that God has brought you into your family. And listen to me, you can't go far enough that God's not still looking at you. And you can't go far enough that he's ready to remove you from the estate because he's interested in keeping you as, your, as his son or daughter, as his children, as his heirs to the kingdom. And listen, it doesn't matter where you go, but how many of you are like me? You've gone through some seasons of your life where you're going, God, I don't know if you see me or not. Anybody ever gone through some dark seasons? You just give me a head, just give me a little nod of your head if you've been through some dark stuff, been through some lonely stuff. And we got questions for God. When you get to heaven, you're like, listen, I'm going to be happy I'm there, but I got some questions. <laughs> I, I want to know why I went through whatever, or why I had to navigate this, or why I struggled with that. And here's the reality. I want you to understand something, because many of you have gone through seasons where you felt like God was not looking at you. You, matter of fact, you felt alone. You felt like he didn't care. You cried when no one else could hear you, and you said, God, I don't even know if you love me. And can I tell you something? You've never been alone. Look at me, look at me. You've never been alone. There's never been a moment where God didn't see you. And we found a song that I think beautifully speaks to this idea. far behind. I was close to you. I was close to you. Carry me back to that moment in time when the colors and fragments were beautifully bright. How I long for you. How I long
for days You've already been in this desolate place You've already been here and you've made a break It breaks the glory strung out across the sky Memories of darkness undone by the light Reminding me you are right here by my side You're here by my side You're here by my side Now here in the dark Underneath the canopy and star Constellations falling from your heart They tell me that I'm not alone I know that I'm never alone Could you find me and bring me back home? I'm never alone, never alone, I'm never alone Find me and bring me back home Wow You know, I think this song communicates something so beautiful to all of us because the reality is we've all been through those dark areas of our lives. That's all right. That's what kids do. It's all right. It's, it's, it's babies. It's fine. That's, what, that's the darkness that we've all experienced looking saying, God, I know you. I know you see me, right? And listen, he does. He does see. You've never been alone. Because listen, as a king, Jesus brings life to the dark and dead areas of your life. The darkness that you thought was too far gone, your sin that you thought was just too big, the issues you thought God couldn't handle, listen, he can bring life to you. As a king, Jesus brings life to the dark and dead areas of your life. But it takes surrender to a king, John, 8 12 says again Jesus spoke to them saying I am the say that word with me light the light of the world whoever follows me will not walk in darkness but will have the light of what light. and God wants that for you he wants you to walk in the light I don't know about you I know this is true for me but how many guys have ever walked consumed by the darkness? Consumed by darkness. And in the midst of the darkness, what you're really trying to do as you walk through the darkness is you're trying to shine your light on something you think is gonna give you value. I'm a musician, so I tried drums. I was really successful at it, but it never quite gave me what I was looking for. Tried my wife. Maybe if I build a family, maybe, maybe if I build a family, I'll be able to have the value. It'll give me what I'm looking for. Maybe if I, maybe it's my career. If I could get big enough in my career, maybe, maybe God would love me enough. Maybe I could outshine the, the bad things that I've done. Maybe if I could make enough money. If I could make enough money, maybe, maybe I would have what I'm looking for. Maybe I could find purpose. If I could, if I could just climb the corporate ladder, then I could see that I'm worth something. Maybe if I could have some kids, maybe that would give me the life that I'm looking for. And how many of you realize that it didn't matter what you pointed your light on? It was never enough. Because listen to me, it's never been about what you can shine your light on. It's always been about Jesus shining his light on you. You're going to get the light. Y'all going to get the light right here. But listen to me. He didn't shine his light on you for you. Or just for you, I should say. Because when he shines his light on you, he shines it on you so that it'll shine to others. That what God wants is that when he shines his light on you, you would live a life that reflects his glory to the world around you. That's why we say one light can reflect with a million beams to give hope to the world around us. That's what God wants for us. That's why he says in Matthew 5, 16, in the same way, let your light shine before others. Listen, that they may see your good deed. They would see that what you're doing, but they wouldn't applaud you. They would glorify God in heaven. Listen, God wants to shine a light on you 
so that as he shines his light on you, it gives hope to the world around you that God really is who he says he is. He wants your life to matter. And starting next week, we're gonna tell some stories. We're going into a series called How'd They Do It? And we're gonna tell you about five or six different stories of people that in the darkest area of their life, how God brought victory into those parts of their lives. And just to give you a little teaser of what next week's gonna look like or what we're gonna kick off next week, we got a video we wanna show you. Go ahead and roll it, guys. And he grabbed me and um, I got stabbed four times. When I was laying there playing dead, I could hear um, the crying, the screaming from my brother and sister when he was stabbing them. You didn't love me for 15 years and um, now you're trying to get into my life and I don't want you to be because my life is great how it is. I see all the kids that are in school with their fathers um, or like we go on a field trip and like they're walking around with their dads or their dads like got off work to come come visit them at school or have lunch with them like I was like, okay. Okay God I've given 38 years of my life to ministry and you're going to take my grandson. You know that wasn't a deal that I signed up for. Um, there was a lot of yelling, a lot of being in people's faces, um, just you know I, I felt beat down so I felt like you know, the people around me needed to feel how I was feeling and the frustration and everything else. I still give God glory because and where would I be if I did not go through the pain that I went through? Everything happens for a reason. God planned this to be this way and it's definitely drawing me still closer to Him. There's something so powerful about just breaking that generational curse and um, starting a new lineage. Like, I, there's a, I can't, I can't even describe it. Like, I'm just, I can't wait to be able to just like lead my family and lead the generations that are going to come out of you know my marriage um, after we break this generational curse or as we break this generational curse. Three and a half years ago, I wouldn't, been, wouldn't be sitting here having this conversation. Though, that's for sure. Um, God has been doing some amazing things. Our purpose is found in our pain, and uh, the greatest messages of our life are not found in our victories, but in our seemingly defeats when we come out. The Bible's a book of pain. And so uh, just walking through that, and now today, to be able to sit on the front row and cheer our son, but not just our son, but our whole family, uh, is a very active part of Transformation Church today, down to our youngest grandchild. And, uh, and then we've got one in heaven. We're really excited. We're excited about the series that kicks off next week. And I want to invite you to come back next week because I can promise you there's a lot more pain around you than you might realize. Listen, everybody in this room has gone through something. Come on, do me a favor. If you've gone through something, would you just raise your hand? Okay. So we can all agree sometimes life's not fair. But we can also agree for those of us that have already made the step, that letting Jesus be the Lord of your life, be the king of your life, is better than you being the king of your life. So I say, Brad, how do I, all right, I'm here, I'm here for it, what do I do? Well, I wanna give you this one step. It's not easy, but it is simple. Make Jesus the king of your life. Make Jesus the king, the authority, the one that rules and reigns over your life. And we wanna help you Starting next week, move in that direction. That's why John 10.10, 10, Jesus says, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that they would have life and have it to the full. So what, it, what does God want for us? He wants us to, to have life. And here's the one thing I want, if you'll just look at me for a second as we wrap up today. I know for me, even in ministry, I know a lot of times people think that pastors have some secret access to God or something. We don't. And think we don't go through stuff. We do. For those of you that don't know, the man on the video talking about his grandson dying, that's my dad. And the grandson he's talking about is my son that passed away in 2018. We know what pain looks like. 
And here's one thing I do know, is I know what it feels like to try to be the king of your own life. And it's exhausting. Matter of fact, let's just take a self-assessment. Many of you, you're trying to be the king of your own life and it's exhausting. You're trying to steer the ship. You're trying to write the next chapter on your own. You're trying to make it happen. You're trying to grind your way to success. You're trying to, with all of the power you have in you, make sure life turns out a certain way. And how many of you have realized you don't have that kind of power, do you? You need someone else that has more power. And listen to me, you need the one that's in control of the wind and the waves. You need the one that's in control of tomorrow. You need the one that knows next year just as well as he knows today and last year. You need the one that has authority over all, listen, to be the king of your life. And what I'm inviting you to is to let Jesus be the king. Because you can fight for the power only to realize you have none or you can surrender to the power to the one that's always had it. So here's what I want you to think about. Imagine how free your life could be if you made Jesus the king of your life. Because that's the kind of freedom Jesus wants you to walk in. Am I inviting you to say yes to that? At TC, here's what we do. We challenge people, give us one year. We call it the one year challenge. Give us one year. Take all four steps, know God, give your life to Jesus, make him king. Get in a small group to find freedom. Let us help you with discovering your purpose and let's make a difference together. And if at the end of one year, you're not living the best life you could live, you can do whatever you want. I mean, technically you can do whatever you want anyways. It's not one of those weird cult things, but, but you, can, you can leave, you can do whatever you want. Can I say something? Hundreds of people have accepted the challenge We've never had one walk out the door mad at who God had become in their life. Never happened. TC, if you've been one of those, can you put your hand together? Every year, man, every year. I'm inviting you to say yes to that. If you're here, because we want to see God do something great in your life. Because we believe, listen to me, the best is yet to come. Let's let Jesus be king and watch him change everything in your lives. All right, let me pray for you. Father, we thank you for who you are. God, we pray right now. God, I I pray for every person that's in here, Lord, that maybe they know you, but they haven't yet fully surrendered to you. God, that you would just completely move in their lives. God, we thank you for who you are. Father, I pray right now, God, that you speak to our hearts, that we could surrender and help us in Jesus' name. Let us accept the challenge to come follow you completely. We thank you today and we love you. If you're here today, friends, you say, Brad, I, I need Jesus to be the king of my life. I'm not, I, maybe I know about God, but I don't know God. But today he's, he's touching my heart and I'm ready to surrender. I'm ready to make him king. If that's you, the beauty of the gospel is that even though we've all sinned, Jesus died on the cross to pay for those sins. And today, if you're ready to receive forgiveness, today, if you're ready for a fresh start, today, if you're ready to let him be king, I want to invite you. I want to count to three. And on the count of three, I just want you to lift a hand up. I'm not going to come to you. I'm not going to point you out. I'm not going to embarrass you. We just want to let Jesus do something great in your life. And so are you ready? One, two, three. That's me, Brad. That's me. Hands are going up all over. I need Jesus to be the Lord of my life. Yes, yes, yes. Hands are all. Yeah. I need Jesus to be king of my life. I'm surrendering right now. I'm ready to let him be king. I'm ready to let him have control. Perfect. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. You can put your hands down once you put them up. Here's what I want to do. I want to lead you in a prayer. And this prayer doesn't save you. It just puts words to what you're believing. That's that when Jesus died on the cross, he paid for your sins. And today you have a fresh start and the whole church is going to pray it. So you don't pray by yourself. So let's pray. Say, dear Jesus, Forgive me. Forgive me my sin. I believe in you. I believe you died for me. So I give you my life. Make me brand new. Give me a fresh start as I make you king of my life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. TC, let's give it up for all those that prayed that today. We celebrate with you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Let's stand to our feet all across this place. As we're standing, listen very closely because we're not done just yet. Listen very closely. 
If you do us a huge favor, make sure you tap that disc in front of you. T- hit, tap your phone on that. If you don't have a smartphone or anything like that, just go by the orange tint. We got a team, they'll give you a paper card you can fill out, all right? But make sure you fill that card out. Listen to me, this isn't the end of your journey. This is the beginning of your journey. And we wanna help you on it, but we can only do that if we know who you are, all right? And listen, we're gonna do one more thing before we leave today, and we call it the moment of reflection. I wanna invite you to close your eyes across this place. I wanna ask you this, what is God speaking to your heart right now? Maybe it's about recommitting. Maybe it's about getting plugged in. Maybe it's about making this Sunday thing an every week thing. Whatever it is, what is God speaking to your heart? And what are you going to do about it? That's what's next. We're going to give you just a moment to reflect on that. Our prayer team is up here. If you need prayer about anything, as we get ready to go into this next song, we're going to worship Jesus one more time. If you need prayer, feel free to step forward and they'll be happy to pray for you. But take just a moment and reflect.
Jesus in this place. Jesus is alive. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Give it up for Jesus one more time. Come on. Thank you guys so much for joining us today on Easter Sunday. We hope you have an awesome week and we'll see you next Sunday.